Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff in the case of things. I'm your good friend Bradley. Today is a Pleasant Sunday smoke, and on this Pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of Robert McConnell, Majesty Elizabeth. Now, I just recorded my review of this blend. Of course, in the review of this blend, I was comparing it to this blend, my favorite blend of all time, <sighs> Dunhill's Elizabethan mixture. Um, tune in on this Wednesday when this review posts to see how much I think this tastes like Dunhill Elizabethan. I know a lot of people are mentioning in the comments, well, it's not supposed to be a replacement for the STG Elizabethan. It was supposed to be a replacement for the Murray's made Elizabethan. I've never had the Murray's Elizabethan, so I don't know what that tasted like. All I can do is compare it to the Scandinavian Tobacco Group Elizabethan, which I love dearly. So that's what I was doing a lot in that review. And then I also just tried to touch on whether it's a good blend in its own right. Hit the timer, hit the timer, hit the timer, there's the timer. Um, so we get into that. We're gonna be doing something a little bit more with this blend during this version, this edition of Sunday Smoke. We're gonna get into that in a minute. Um, do I even have my Ask Stuff and Things messages? Hold on. All right, I have them here and we have a couple messages that actually deal with Majesty Elizabeth, and Dunhill Elizabethan. We're gonna to get to that in a minute because I have some other things to mention first. That was loud. Number one, um, thank you so much for those of you who checked out my brother's blog, Diapers and Delirium. I'm gonna plug it again because he's my little brother and he's a great guy and you should check out his blog, diapersanddelirium.com. There will be a link in the description below. Quite a few of you did and he was actually quite shocked and uh, Pleasantly surprised by how many of you checked that out. So thank you very, 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 very much. Also, Stuff and Things Plays, the channel is continuing on. Uh, more Red Dead Redemption 2, but we are going to intersperse one episode, a one-off, into the mix. We are going to be playing a game called Ape Out. It was a game I picked up recently on Switch, and I really enjoyed it, and so I'm doing one of those one-off episodes, the You've Gotta Play This episode, and it's going to be on Ape Out. That will be posting, maybe it was today's, I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be Monday's. I, I, I don't know. I, this is in the past, and that will be in the future, and I'm not exactly sure what's going to be uploaded when, but check out the Stuff and Things Plays channel for that. Uh, next Wednesday, as I mentioned, Robert McConnell's Majesty Elizabethan, and then we've got many other blends that we're going to be getting through that need first impressions videos and reviews. We're going to get to all that stuff in probably the next Sunday Smoke. We'll have a, a roadmap of different blends that we'll be reviewing. But for now, I want to intersperse and ask Stuff and Things question into the beginning of the show. This is from Sven Archer at Rev Sven Archer. He says this at SAT Bradley hashtag ask Stuff and Things. How can you be so sure about Majesty Elizabeth and Elizabethan when you sucked so hard at the Coca-Cola Pepsi Challenge? All caps. Also, it's not Majesty Elizabethan. It says Majesty Elizabeth! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, blah, 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 blah. He's referring to the fact that when I did the first impression video, I constantly called this Majesty Elizabethan. At the end of the video, I put up a big graphic that said Majesty Elizabeth with some exclamation points, showing you that I noticed that, but still everyone in the comments had to say, hey! It's Majesty Elizabeth, you idiot. I'm aware. It's just something that's gonna be a problem with me. I have Elizabethan mixture on the mind, and so whenever I think of this, I'm gonna probably say Majesty Elizabethan. Maybe some of the time I'll say Majesty Elizabeth. Maybe some of the time I'll say Dunhill Elizabeth mixture. I don't know. It's gonna be a problem. We're just gonna have to deal with it. But he brings up a good point. You may remember my extremely, extremely creative and unique video in which I tried to taste taste test Coke versus Pepsi um, and got it wrong. Pepsi always seems sweeter to me and kind of like medicine-y. Here we go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm gonna reserve judgment or I'm not gonna tell you what my judgment is until I've tasted both. Okay, this is gross. This is Pepsi. This is Pepsi. This is Pepsi. This is Pepsi. This is pretty delicious. It's in a can. My only thing, the only thing I'd say about that is that I am not a cola expert, but I am a Dunhill Elizabethan mixture expert, and I'm pretty sure that if we did a blind taste test, I would be able to tell the difference. And with that in mind, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let me, we're gonna make a little room here. We're gonna get out, ugh, I've got a surface that we're gonna put up here. 
you can sort of see this maybe kind of not really we're going to adjust the camera hold on okay you can sort of see the table i'm working on you can sort of see this what we're going to do we're going to get two pieces of paper like this on the bottom of each piece i'm going to very very tinily tinily write em for elizabethan mixture so we're going to use e m and then we're going to do uh, M-E for Majesty Elizabeth. So now you can see. We have... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, that works. We have M-E for Majesty Elizabeth. And we have E-M for Elizabethan Mixture. Now, we'll turn these over. I cannot see through these sheets of paper. I cannot tell which is which. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of Dunhill Elizabethan and we're going to put it on one of these pieces of paper. Mm. Now, this is another thing I should point out. Now, obviously, these tins, there are different amounts of tobacco in each tin, so it doesn't work for me to just sort of have them open like this and try to pick out because I would be able to tell because there is fewer, there is fewer, there are less, there is less in the Elizabeth, the Dunhill, the, oh my God, this is gonna be so hard. In the Majesty Elizabeth tin than there is in the Elizabethan mixture tin. But the, look at, look at the tobacco in there. They look very similar. It's hard for me by eye to tell these apart. And if I grab a little bit out, put some on each one. In fact, now I need to remember, okay. This is EM, this is Elizabethan mixture. We'll put a little bit on there. We don't need a whole bowl. I don't, I'm gonna have to dirty up like two extra pipes right now. So we'll just get a little bit and I'm gonna try to get the exact same amount of the Majesty Elizabeth on this piece of paper. We're gonna do this, this is gonna work, maybe. So let's see, let's see if I can get a very similar amount looking about the same. The moisture content is very, very, very similar. Yeah, these two little piles Hard to tell apart, maybe get rid of that. That was a big piece, big chunk. Okay, can you guys tell these apart? Can you see them? Not really. I'll, I'll lift these up to the camera here in a second. Then what I'm gonna do, because there are, this is actually a backgammon set that these are sitting on. Um, I am going to, and, and there's, there's like hinges and things. So if I were to just like twirl this around, I'd be able to tell like, oh, well the clip is this way. So this is here and this is here. We're not going to do that. What we're going to do, once I've shown you these two piles of tobacco, you can't really tell what they are. I am going to put these down here. I am going to get this to the side for a minute. I am going to twirly these around as much as I possibly can. I'm going to close my eyes while I do it. Actually, that doesn't work, but I'm going to lose track already because I can't remember where I was or how I was. I think maybe Elizabethan was here when I started, but now I'm not sure. I'm worried that I'm gonna rub these two together. If I'm looking, okay, I'm gonna not look directly at them. So in my peripheral vision, I can kind of tell what's happening. I also wanna twirl them like this way and that way. So in case there was anything weird with how the paper looked or anything like that, basically I want to get rid of any chance that I will be able to recognize which one is which. Okay, so these are here. Well, they're here. You can sort of see, you can't see. We're going to get the thing. I'm not looking at these still. I'm going to put these up on here. I can sort of see them in my peripherals. Then, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm gonna pick one and load my pipe. I'm not looking at them, not looking directly at them now. So you can see this and I'm not looking at the screen. Even if I looked at the screen, I wouldn't be able to tell enough. So if there was anything weird about the papers or anything like that, I can't tell. I'm going to grab some of this. I'm going to put this in a pipe. This is hard to do because I can't see it. Not looking, not looking. Not looking, not looking, not looking at all. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. This is just gonna be a really sloppy pack here. I have to look at the pipe as I pack it in. I apologize for that. 
but it is necessary. Now, is there any more on here? Okay, looking a little bit, but I just need to see. All right, so we have one pipe. My Dunhill 1962 Shell Briar is filled with something. Still not looking, and because I can't see what this is, I'm gonna throw this in here. So now we have this piece of paper. We have this other one here, not looking at it. I'm gonna use my Peterson spigot pipe. By touch, I can't tell the difference between these two blends. We're loading them up. Hold on. Uh, I kinda have to look as I pack it. Kinda have to look as I pack it. Still not looking really at all. Okay, uh, kind of looking a little bit. So now we have this pipe. So we're going to, once again, without looking, dump this off. We have a piece of paper here, a piece of paper here. This pipe came from this piece of paper. This pipe came from this piece of paper. Still without really looking, I'm going to take a sip of Dr. Pepper and look at that. We're gonna light this one. I'm not gonna smell them either. I'm just gonna light them and go. Here we go. Uh-huh. I've already got some ideas here. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 I will leave my conclusion till the end, till I've tasted them both. So that was the one on this side, the one in the Dunhill. Here's the one in the Peterson. Yep. Oh, I was definitely right. I knew what I was doing as soon as I tasted the first one. But we're gonna go through the entire procedure here. I'm gonna get this one actually going. Here we go. Mm-hmm. All right. As soon as I lit this one here, my Dunhill, I knew what was in it. And as soon as I tasted this, my Peterson, it was confirmed. This one here in the Peterson, I'm not gonna look yet, I'm gonna show you first. Can you see? Now you know what it is, okay? This one, It has that soapy quality. It lacks the bottom end. It's just not quite right. It's not quite what I'm looking for. And this one, I bet my life on it, is Majesty Elizabeth. Am I right? Yes, <laughs> okay, it's upside down. This one is the Majesty Elizabeth. As soon as I lit it, I could tell. This one is Elizabethan. As soon as I lit it, I could tell as well. Um, it was pretty easy for me, and I didn't think it would be difficult at all. So now I've got three pipes. 
I have two pipes that have Majesty Elizabeth in them, one pipe that has Elizabethan in them. Uh, this is an issue. I'm gonna have to smoke all of these at some point, I guess. But there you go, gang, the blind taste test. I hope you agree with my methodology here. This is the best I could come up with for doing some, like a blind taste test on the show um, without having like a little helper boy or something loading up pipes for me without me being able to see. But I assure you, I was not looking at anything. I was doing my very best not to spoil this. So I think that's pretty conclusive. Well, I'm sure there are people who will still argue with me, but in my mind, it's very conclusive. And the first time I tasted the Majesty Elizabeth, I knew it was not Elizabethan, and, and you know, I didn't expect it to be anyway. All right, gang, I have one other thing to do before we get to ask stuff and things. Okay, our good friends, the Galdieri family, have sent me a package uh, to the P.O. box for the Stuff and Things show, and I'm going to pop it open now, hopefully not show their address off. They've been very uh, diligent watchers of the Stuff and Things Plays series, and they let me know that they were sending something along. I don't, I, I don't have a knife. I didn't bring a knife. I have a screwdriver. Ugh, and I'm very curious to see what it is. So we are going to open it Ugh, on the show. Come on now. Hiya. Hoya. Come on. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Ugh. You really, you really taped this up, my friend. You taped it up a lot. Ow. Ugh. Okay. There we go. The box is open. And inside we have, oh my God. Get tobacco everywhere. Oh, we have a letter. Bradley, oh my God, this is really long. It feels thick. This envelope is very thick. What is happening here? What the hell? Uh, he has sent me a check. That's crazy. Uh, we're not going to talk about the actual amount or anything. I guess this is in lieu of Patreon. He has a wonderful Christmas card. Oh, with the whole family and everything. Much love, the Galdieri family. Oh, that's very sweet. Uh, I don't know, should I show all this stuff? Is that okay, John? I hope so. Look at that family. That's wonderful. He talks about watching my Stuff and Things Plays video with his little daughters, uh, or with his six-year-old daughter, which may be child abuse, I'm not sure, but it's much appreciated. Thank you so much, that is so sweet. And then we have, oh my God. Okay, now let me see. I might have to read this over very quickly to see if I should be reading this uh, out in front of everybody here. Okay, well this is very, very touching. I'm going to read this. Uh, I feel weird about reading things that are like super complimentary, but you know, thank you, John, so much. He says, Dear Bradley, we are sending you this package with much love and thanks for all that you do. Do you recognize the Kanpeki Iroshizuku ink uh, on this letter? Yes, I do. Coming from my Lamy 2000 fountain pen. We have all been watching your channels for almost five years now, and as you may have ascertained from our regular comments, your Stuff and Things Plays channel has entertained us on a regular basis. My wife and I are big gamers, as is our seven-year-old daughter with her monkey vagina. That's an that's a inside joke there, gang. My daughter has probably watched your Mario Odyssey series ten times through. Please accept the enclosed gift as a token of our appreciation for all that you do. We also enclosed a nifty little rest for your said gift, so it doesn't roll away from you if you want to set it down. Interesting. Additionally, we added a small check in, an, in the amount equivalent to pledging a certain amount to your Patreon for the remaining, remainder of 2019. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much again for all that you do for, your, for the YouTube community. You are truly a gem. Northern New Jersey loves you at the Galdieri family. You guys are great. Uh, I've appreciated your comments for so long. I've really enjoyed seeing you react to the Stuff and Things Plays videos, particularly that I post. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. It's very sweet. And now I'm very curious to see what we have in here. Okay, I think I grabbed everything out. I think it's a pipe. Let's check it out, gang. What is this? It looks, oh, okay. We have a case. I'm not gonna look at the label first and a little uh, pipe rest, leather pipe rest, very cool. We have here, let me do this without smacking it open, destroying everything. 
Oh, look at that. That is a gorgeous Meerschaum. That is absolutely lovely. With the metal rim there, I don't know, is this hallmarked? Is this silver? This might be silver. Let's see, let's see what this says here. This is just some random numbers. It's an AKB, AKB Meerschaum. I don't know a ton about Meerschaums. I had one that was just like, it was one of those sort of touristy carved uh, Meerschaums that you couldn't really smoke. It wasn't really smokable. Oh yeah, these usually have a threaded stem. I just want to take this out and take a look. Thank you so much, John. Thank you to the entire Galdieri family. This is very cool. Oh, maybe this isn't threaded. Interesting. So sort of Cumberland looking stem. This may be acrylic. I can't tell. Uh, let me put this in and actually taste the taste test the draft here. So this is cool. I've never actually well, I smoked a Meerschaum a couple times, but I have never really done it regularly. Nice open draft hole. This is really nice. This is lovely. It is a genuine Tekken Meerschaum. So I'm gonna have to look that up. AKB Meerschaum says inside there. Again, I don't know a ton about Meerschaums. I've never really had very many of them. I've owned just the one. Um, that I can't really smoke, but thank you so much. We will be smoking this on future episodes of the Sunday Smoke. That really means a lot, guys. Thank you. Well then, you guys are great. You're all fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to everyone who contributes on, on Patreon as well. There's just so much love going on out there. It's kind of crazy. Um, I am going to tamp one of these pipes and light it and smoke it while we get to the hashtag ask stuff and things section of the show. Ah, I mean, I'm going to smoke them all anyway. Remember, if you have a question you would like it answered on the show, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things and I'll do my best to answer. Also, if you are a Patreon subscriber, you can ask questions there as well. First, from Twitter, we have <clears throat> a burrowing owl. He says, at a burrowing owl, what are your thoughts on the esoterica craze? Worthy of the hype? Which esoterica blends have you smoked? Thanks. We've touched on this before. I haven't reviewed any esoterica blends for a while. Actually, I had a one-time alert just the other day that uh, esoterica Dunbar was available. Dunbar. I always want to say Durbar. Dunbar. Um, I've already reviewed Dunbar and the eight ounce bag was gone by the time I went on to Smoking Pipes to check. Picked up a lot because they are both hard to get and also because many of the blends are actually really good. I reviewed Penzance, I did Margate, I think, I did Dunbar, and I really enjoyed all those blends. I think they are really good, really high quality blends. I think the hype is a little exaggerated just because of how limited their availability is, but they are definitely worth getting if you can get them. And they're not overpriced. If they're in at Smoking Pipes or someplace like that, they're reasonably priced. It's just they're hard to get. Don't pay more than they're actually worth. Don't pay more than you would get, you know, from Smoking Pipes or something or that you would give Smoking Pipes for them. Um, but I think if you can get them at their actual normal price, they're worth getting. Uh, this is from CJC at CJ Crichton. He says, Curious if you have tried Rat Rays or Rat Rays Black Mallory. No, I have not, but that is something that has been requested many times, and I will have to get to it eventually. Motorcycles, we have Uncle Brian at Bell 007. He says, I'm a vapor fan who has never tried a Elizabethan mixture, but I have one tin. Do you recommend smoking it to use as a comparison for other blends of celery to break open in the future and enjoy? I will only have one shot at the real Elizabethan mixture. Um. I don't know. That's a tough one. I'd say put it away for a couple years. It's only going to improve it and you'll be able to taste it then. And if you taste it now, you'll enjoy it. But I think maybe the experience will be a little bit better and a little bit more special if you put some years on it. That's what I do. Next, we have Baxter Van West. But do what you want. It's your tin of Elizabethan. At Baxter underscore, underscore plus underscore egg, he says, or no, yeah, that, that was the Twitter handle. He says... When did you start smoking a pipe on a regular basis? Um, that would have been six years ago now. It's when I stopped smoking cigarettes. I used to smoke cigarettes and I smoked pipes occasionally. It was sort of a, a very 
uh, every once in a while a hobby kind of thing. And I quit smoking cigarettes, cold turkey. Didn't touch anything for several months and then I slowly started smoking a pipe and that became a more regular thing and I delved more into the hobby. So that was about six years ago. Uh, last one. We're going to be a little more brief this, this week. It's Tyler at Tyler Brew Brew. He says, We all know that McClellan has shut their doors for good, which is a sad truth. Were there any blends by them you wanted to try that you didn't get a chance to? Um, McClellan... People get annoyed with me for this, but I never loved a lot of McClellan blends. I know that they're beloved by many people. I know that there are many blends that many people loved. Um, but I was never a huge McClellan person and there weren't really any on my list that I was dying to try. I think I got to most of the ones that I had a lot of interest in and I got them, reviewed them on the channel. I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now that I feel like I was missing out on uh, the fact that I didn't get to review it. But I'm sure if I, maybe someone will remind me in the comments of some other blends that were some of their best and maybe I will remember that I did want to check that out. But for now, not really. And now, as the train's about to roll by, I think there's no better time than now to shout out our good Patreon subscribers, the people who support the channel at $25 and up. They get a shout out on the show, and I really appreciate the contribution they make to these channels, and you should thank them too, because they're great people. You're great people as well, because you watch the show, you comment, you leave questions, you do things like that. We appreciate it. But we especially want to give a little shout out to our $25 and up Patreon supporters, just like Glenn. Thank you so much, Glenn. You're a great guy. I'm assuming you're a guy because your name is Glenn. Thank you to Kevin Moore. Thank you so much, Kevin, for being a $25 Patreon supporter. Thank you to Derek, just Derek. Thank you so much. Cody Stabigla, a Patreon $25 supporter. Thank you, buddy. Nathaniel Hills. Thank you so much for supporting the show at $25. Kirk Crompton, again, love that name, Kirk Crompton. You're doing well, you're doing great. C.W. Piperman is also a Patreon $25 supporter and we cannot thank you enough. And next we have the Maniac tier, the crazy people who support the show at $100 a month. We have Peter Straub, who I read your last message on Patreon, Peter. Uh, and I need time to actually write you a good response because your messages are always great and they're always longer than I feel like I I feel like I'm reading something that is so thoughtful that I need to be able to have the time to put as much thought into the response so I'll get to that and definitely uh, I'm thinking well we we mentioned a date for our patreon chat um, and we'll do that soon and then also Bob McGee thank you so much for being a maniac a $100 supporter on patreon Gang, I think this was a good show. Uh, we're up over 30 minutes already, I can see on my timer. Um, I think it was really fun to do the blind taste test between Majesty Elizabeth and Dunhill's Elizabethan. I didn't have any doubt in my mind that I would be able to pick which one was which. One thing I will say, when I was smoking them right next to each other, as much as uh, the first time I tried Elizabeth and I thought that it was just nothing like Elizabethan, it is a little more close to Elizabethan than I initially thought, but it is still very distinctly not Elizabethan um, and pretty easy to tell, at least for me. But I still think you guys should watch the review, which we'll be posting this Wednesday. Watch my Ape Out You've Gotta Play This video, which will be on Stuff and Things Play soon. And then, of course, the Red Dead Redemption 2 series is continuing. But until next week, until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This is Stuff and Things Plus Today's Book. I'll see you later. Dr. Pepper.